Peace be upon you and welcome to today's episode of Mind Your Own Business, the show where we help business leaders to become more successful, be more happy and be more free. On today's show, we're going to be joined by a special guest. This special guest has recently featured on Channel 4 and is taking a business from £600 turnover all the way to one of the biggest shopping centres in the world and transform that into a multi-million pound turnover business. All that and more in today's show. Now let's meet our guest. Kazi Shafiq Rahman, thank you very much for coming on to our show today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to have people with your talents. So thank tell you. us a little bit more about what you're up to at the moment. So um, what I'm doing right now is um, I'm on a quest to launch um, a British new airline. Um, so currently we are almost about three months away from the actual launch of the company. We've been working very hard for the past uh, few years. I mean, the reason why it's been a few years is because obviously I'm trying to do it um, steadily and properly and, you know, not try and, you know, run before I, I can walk. So I'm trying to do everything, you know, slowly but steadily, much like how we started Sunomask, you know, where we started very small and then, you know, we've grown as we developed a solid and strong foundation to the company. Yeah, so we're going to ask you a little bit more about um, Sunam asking the show and ask you some questions about how you overcame your challenges and what it is that drove you from driving such a small business from a tiny market stall and putting it into one of the biggest shopping centers in the world. Before we do that, you are the CEO and founder of Finas Airways and you recently featured on the Channel 4 documentary as well. Tell us a little bit more about that. So um, the, the, the Channel 4 documentary process has been quite... It's been a very interesting um, journey for me because A, I have never been a media person, you know, I've always been afraid of cameras right. and I'm sure you can see now I'm quite, you know, I'm okay, I'm relaxed and yeah, I you think... terrified uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was m more to do with uh, my journey with Channel 4. I mean, I, I remember the, the first day they said, yeah, we're going to come and do a master interview with you and I was like, literally. I was so afraid. Yeah. But somehow along the journey I've kind of transformed myself and I guess with their help, you know, it's, 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 it's been a very fascinating journey. It's effectively like, you know, trying to, you know, cook the food in front of your customers. Right. So you've got the camera crew following you around, you know, almost every day uh, trying to see what you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, you're always afraid, like, am I making a mistake or am I going to do something wrong? Or is, am I going to be able to meet my targets and, 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 and goals? So... It's, it's been a very kind of um, challenging journey, I would say. It's been like running two marathons at the same time where sure. you're trying to launch the company at the same time, satisfy the, 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 the Channel 4 documentary as well. So you're at the start of your journey with Finas Airways right now, but before you started Finas Airways, you um, was one of the founders of uh, Sunna Musk. So tell us a little bit more about Sunna Musk for people that are not familiar with your brand. So Sunna Musk is a um, retail business. Um, we mainly focus on um, oil-based fragrances and um, what you can consider to be Arabic fragrances. So that's what we specialize in. We started off uh, very small. Um, I'm, I'm sure many would um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, they have witnessed the fact that we were trading behind Istana Mosque uh, from the back of our vans and, you know, cars. Um, and then on to market stalls in Bethnal Green and Whitechapel Market and then, you know, to Ilford Shopping Centre and then ultimately to the likes of Westfield and, you know, having our flagship story opposite Islano Mosque right near uh, the, the Islamic Bank. So, uh, I mean, it's been a hugely challenging journey because obviously, A, we don't deal with bank interests and any, any, any form of banking instruments. Um, such as letter of credits or overdraft facilities. So it's, the, the journey has been a lot more kind of, um, it's been slower for us because of the organic growth that we wanted to kind of um, do. And, you know, what, you're operating in a country where everything is based on banks. So, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been very tough. But at the same time, alhamdulillah, you know, we must thank Allah and of course our parents for their du'as and everything we have been I, I would consider ourselves to be alhamdulillah you know quite successful I, I, I'm not gonna say you know we're, we're, we're quite there yet you know we've got a long 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 way to go for Sunnah Musk. 
as you do say, all praise to Allah for everything that you've achieved so far. However, you started at one point where you were trading out of the back of vans and out of, um, like you say, in market stalls. What led you from going from market stalls to going into some of the bigger shopping centers? What was the tipping point there? I think every business um, has to have some motivations behind it. And, you know, sometimes that motivation comes from the person who's leading the business or sometimes it could be, you know, other factors. But in our case, I think personally, obviously, we have five brothers who are all part of the business. But I personally have been very kind of ambitious and, you know, I, I wanted to kind of take the brand to a mainstream level because you know when people say things to me you know sometimes they would probably say you know with a view to put you down or to discredit What's you. What's an example? So they will say oh you know market stall or selling other like you know how is how are you going to make that successful you should do this or you should do that and these are the sorts of things that makes me more motivated to prove them you know actually so, I'll prove it to you. Yeah we speak to a lot of uh, business leaders who actually say they find their motivation and their drive by proving to everyone that they can do it. Um, on a previous show we had an athlete here and he wanted to do things because when people said to him you can't do it he wanted to prove to them that actually you can do it is that something similar for you as well i'd i'd say you know this is this is this is one of the common common themes um, entrepreneurs and business people have you know because obviously the, people would tell you on your face you know you can't do it and then you have this urge to say actually do you know what i can do it and i'll prove it to you um, obviously money is also a factor but i think uh, more than that it was it was more about you know do, uh, creating a business that would really have a solid foundation and uh, we have taken some major risks you know given our circumstances and the context we were operating in um, so for example we went from a market stall operator where we were paying like 20 pound a day rent to paying like almost over 100 grand a year so that has been a huge leap and I must admit it was my mum, my mother who was saying go ahead and do it. She was, I think she's more of a risk taker than us because you know us brothers we were kind of shaking a bit before yeah. making that uh, decision but she gave the strength to say you know what go and do it. So where did the idea come from to take the risk from going from a market stall in uh, somewhere like Bethlehem Green to going to somewhere like um, Ilford? Uh, shopping center, which was the first so one. the reason why we ended up in um, Ilford Shopping Centre was because it was winter time. We were operating. We've had a very successful summer in Whitechapel Market, and it was winter. It was you could barely stand in that in the cold. Your hands were freezing. The yeah. perfumes were starting to crystallize, and you know, uh, so it was really hard, difficult to operate in that environment. So I started looking around to see if there was a indoor and more cozy environment where we can offer trade out of and then uh, fortunately um, I came across this um, site in Ilford shopping center not many people at that time were trying to, were going for that approach but I thought let me just give them a call and see what they say and they said yeah come and demonstrate your product and we'll, we'll see you know what it's all about we, we ended up we, we we did go and demonstrate and they said yeah if you want to go ahead then you know let's let's start it was Christmas time I think and you know they wanted like Rent-wise, they wanted about £1,500 a week at that time. And we thought, we might as well give it a go because what else, I mean, what could go wrong? Yeah, we might end up losing, you know, some money, but we're not going to lose all of it. So let's just give it a try. And we did. And it worked out fantastically well. So what you're saying is you almost stumbled upon it for the shopping centre by accident. It was winter, it was cold. Um, and you want it somewhere cozy, somewhere you can have a nice cup of tea with nice heaters when you're not freezing yeah. and your products don't have uh, icicles. Yeah. So you found yourself a little deal at a shopping centre and you thought, let's give it a go, why not? It's Christmas yeah. season, what could possibly go exactly. wrong? Exactly, that was the case. And then what did you discover from that? And what we've learned from that move was that actually, you know, if we can afford to pay that kind of rent and still survive, then you know, I'm sure we can go forward with this and go further. And w we've also realized people actually want our products. And, you know, because we were giving quality products and some people complain, why is Sunomas perfume so expensive? It's the fact that we, we pay more to buy more expensive products. So we realized people actually want our products. And then, you know, we wanted to take it further. So that's when we decided we would, uh, at that time, just before 2011, um, uh, 2012 Olympic, we thought we've, we've got to go into a spiritual shopping centre and you know, 
uh, the guy came over to inspect our site in, in Ilfield Shopping Centre. He's seen it, he liked what we were doing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. You know, he made us an offer and he said, look, I'll put you in front of H&M and, Bo um, H &M and Zara so and everyone the else. the guy, who's the guy? The guy, um, he was the leasing director from Westwood Shopping Centre. Right. He came to see, you know, what we were doing and what our products and our approach and presentation. So after that, I had to chase him for about six months. Six months, non-stop. Normally, people would have given up. Yeah. You know, um, I ended up in Westwood Shopping Centre, the other one, this one. It was still being built at that time. I was calling up, I was emailing. I was literally, like, you know, on the guy, on his case. And then, fortunately, again, you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, I, I managed to email one of the seniors, his seniors. Yes. And he said, by tomorrow, 9 a.m., someone will call you. Okay. And they did. So it sounds fortunate you didn't get a restraining order off. <laughs> I could have if I carried on. Okay. So what you said so far is your success has been down to being determined. Determined. To 100%. prove people wrong. Within a master, certainly. Being determined to prove people wrong. Being a little bit fortunate and taking the risk, but being willing to take that risk. And the quality of your product, it sells itself. So it doesn't Definitely. matter where you take that product and put it, mm. it's going to sell itself because the quality of Sunda Mask fragrances are fantastic. Exactly. And that's been the kind of recipe of your success. 100%. And on to that, to compound that from a turnover of a three-figure to a seven-figure turnover, what you decided to do is go for the big ticket and go into the Westfield Shopping Centre. And for that, you had to chase somebody literally down for six months. So you had to be, again, you had to be determined, but you had to be resilient. Yep. You had to take the no's or the non-responses and keep pushing and keep yep. pushing. And like you said, you did that for every day for six months. Yeah. That must have been quite challenging. And for some people, I can imagine they would have given up after a couple of days. What kept you going? Where did you we find that we focus? We so wanted it. We really, really wanted to be in Westfield. Like, it, was, it actually, and looking back, we're so f we're so glad we chased them, because that's from that moment we became a brand from a market stall operator to a brand Sunomas brand, and from there on we haven't looked back. You know we opened our shop um, in East London, uh, opposite East London Mosque, our flagship store, probably the best looking shop in the in the whole of area. I'm sure you'll agree. Um, and then we've opened up more stores in in Wood Green and uh, most recently in West London in South Old Broadway. Okay, excellent. And how do you pick your locations? With locations, we like to p pick locations that are more expensive. So that gives us an indication there is a reason why it's expensive. So what you're saying you profile an area, go for an affluent area where people have a higher disposable income. Yes. So if the guy is saying, look, you know, 100 grand, I'll, I, I would... You know, I would like that because then I would know at least there's some footfall there. There, there. I would rather operate in an area where you're constantly turning over revenue sure. than just sit there all day, you know, waiting for waiting customers for to come. Across the yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for answering those questions in part one. So in part one, we've spoken to the founder and CEO of Fanasa, where he's formerly the uh, operations manager for Sunamask. And we find out a little bit about what's driven him to achieve the level of success he's achieved. And what have we learned? What we've learned is you've got to be willing to take a risk. You've got to be determined and you've got to focus on what you want. And you have to go out there and prove people wrong. Some people get motivated by doing what they want. Our uh, CEO here has been determined and motivated by people telling him he can't do it, that drive to prove people wrong. And once you've got those things, you have to be a little bit fortunate, but luck favours people that are prepared, and he was prepared to take the risk, and he was at the right place at the right time. They took that risk, and it paid out for them. It paid out so much that now they wanted to go from being in Ilford all the way to the biggest shopping centre in the world, Westfield. And they were rejected for six months, and they had to go and knock on doors and send emails and harass them for six months. But that did not stop him. So that's part one. In part two, we'll find out more about Furnas Airways and what the future shows for him. All that and more in the second part of the show. Whoever offers a sacrifice after prayer has completed his rituals and has followed the way of the Muslims. Last year, we reached thousands of disadvantaged people in Africa, Middle East, India, Pakistan and Bangladesh who enjoy meat Due to your great sacrifice on Kurbani, we ensured healthy animals with highest care on behalf of you. Please continue your trust on us. Share your Kurbani sacrifice with Human Relief Foundation. Call 0207 060 4422. 
Regent's Lake, a beautiful venue in the heart of Tower Hamlets. In an inspiring location by Victoria Park and the Regent's Canal. Accommodating for up to 600 guests. Perfect for small, large and segregated weddings. Specialising in all types of events, giving you exclusive in-house catering facilities. Regent's Lake, your perfect choice. If you've had an accident and that was not your fault, let Unicorn fight for your rights. Don't know where to take the car after an accident? Let Unicorn recover your car 24 hours a day. We provide prompt accident recovery and vehicle replacement. Want someone to help fight for your rights for a non-fault accident? Let Unicorn help you to recover from the losses you have suffered from. Our specialist solicitors provide full legal representation. Thinking of hiring a car to suit an occasion? Let Unicorn provide you an amazing car collection. We provide any sort of vehicle for private hire for any purpose. Unicorn, we provide the right car for the right purpose. Sitting in a broken car after a non-fault accident and thinking of what to do? Let Unicorn replace your vehicle right now. We provide replacement vehicle hire. Unicorn, your non-fault claim assistant and vehicle hire. Impression Events Venue's 10th year anniversary discount of £1,000 for all 2018 functions. For bookings, call 0207 473 4455. Mint Caterers. Caterers, bring taste and glamour to your event. PCO claims, minicab driver or bivodor bondhu, gari accident khoriya, jobless hoat din shesh. Just one phone call, PCO claims afna re dito for a 24 hours recovery, immediate replacement car, storage and repair service, 020-7791-7799. Impression Events Venue's 10th year anniversary discount of £1,000 for all 2018 functions. For bookings, call 0207 Isn't dad come back home? When a marriage breaks down, children suffer the most. If you are in this situation, we are here to help. For child and family matters, Kingdom Solicitors. Amadir community te cargo business er prashar ghotiye se GMG. Ek jogero beshi shomoy dhore GMG astar sathe chhewa diye jacche. Shosta bikaponi protarito hoben na. GMG Bangladesh Biman on Udito, Akmatru, Cargo Sales Agent. Cargo Sheva Nile, Best Sheva Tainin, Nirapotakum, Jim Jigargo. Asta, Obisho Sutter Pratik. Whoever offers a sacrifice after prayer has completed his rituals and has followed the way of the Muslims. Last year, we reached thousands of disadvantaged people in Africa, Middle East, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh who enjoy meat due to your great sacrifice on Kurbani. We ensured healthy animals with highest care on behalf of you. Please continue your trust on us. Share your Kurbani sacrifice with Human Relief Foundation. Call 0207 060 4422. Welcome back to Mind Your Own Business. In the first half of the show, if you missed out, well, you missed out. What we looked at was our special guest, uh, CEO and founder of Finas Airways, Kazi Shafiq Rahman. And he gave us a little insight to his previous business, Sunam Mask, and how he grew that from a £600 turnover to a million pound uh, turnover company. He explained how he was determined in, and relentless in chasing down his opportunities. He also explained how he was happy to take risks and how uh, he, he was fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time. But more importantly, what he's uh, explained and what was the recipe to his success was their belief 
in the fact that if they put everything into something and they focus on that, it will grow and it will flourish. And it was proved absolutely right, which is what led them to going into one of the biggest shopping centers in the world when they started off the back of a van. In the second half of the show, we're going to ask uh, Kali Shafiq Rahman more about his plans going forwards with Finas Airways, where he is now and what tips and advice he would give to aspiring entrepreneurs and people looking to become more successful, so business leaders like yourself. So all that and more in the second half of today's show. Kazi Bhai, I hope you enjoyed the break. Well, I Had did. a chance to get I, some water? I, yes, I certainly have. <laughs> uh, you've, you've, you've given us a lot of information today, which is really good. And you've shared a lot of some very personal stuff. And we appreciate that. And it's very nice to see, see, see that from you. And it's very humbling as well. So let's focus on Furnas Airways now. Tell us a little bit more about where you are right now with that. And what is your next step? So what we're doing right now with Furnas Airways is going through the whole regulatory uh, approval process and that is from the British authorities, not um, a third world country authorities. So everything has to be done by the books, you know. For example, you know, we, when we started the process, you know, we were, we were not confident about the whole team structure. Right. So we've had to delay things, you know, we had to wait and get the proper people on board. So, you know, we don't get stopped over, you know, for not having a strong team. So, you know, these things take time and, you know, I know a lot of people have been, you know, waiting patiently for this to happen. There are a lot of supporters out there who want for us to happen. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, when you're working with the regulators, you know, you have to go with their pace. And I'm sure you understand this, you know, more than anyone else, you know, with regulators, you can't push them. If you push them, it's counterproductive, counterproductive. they'll probably slow down. So that's what we're doing, but um, I think um, where you know this whole idea started from was 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 my passion again. You know, I'm I'm very passionate about the the aviation business. You know, the whole concept we'll, of we'll come to your personal life in a moment. Just before we move on to that, what is the next step for Finasso? So once you've got through the compliance and the red tape hurdles, what's the next step? The next step is to start operating as a private charter operator. So we're not going to take on any schedules at this stage. Um, we, once we've fine-tuned our business and the processes and the systems and the foundation of the company, then we would, inshallah, gradually grow into scheduled operations within Europe. But at this stage, just remain as a char private charter operators, uh, operator where we would fly corporate travelers or even group travelers or maybe a group of friends who would want to you know, go for a day out in Paris or, or maybe Ireland or, or Scotland. So local trips to local Europe. Local trips within Europe. We've got a 19-seater aircraft, so it's perfect for you know, even sightseeing, you know, excursions, you know, all, the, all those sorts of things. And we've been actually having... Yeah, we've been getting a lot of inquiries from big companies like Airbus as well to, you know, use our services yeah. to sh sh uh, move their staff around. Okay. And when do you anticipate that uh, progressing? Or um, it's really difficult to give a time frame, but personally, in my mind, you know, I would like to have this up and running by October, October or November. Oh, October this year. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So that sounds like it's in the very near future. Then. Alhamdulillah. Okay. I mean, we've been wor um, at work for some time now and, you know, we've, with Brexit and everything, you know, that's happening around us, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, uh, uncertainty around our industry, aviation industry, where, you know, there's a lot of regulations involved, a lot of negotiations involved with the European Union. So we've been subject to some of that, you know, delay as well as sure. we speak. Okay. So now let's focus on a little bit more of you as a person. Um, and we're going to take a little deep dive into your personal life to find out the traits of successful entrepreneurs like yourself. So you have no previous background in aviation. Uh, your family is not in aviation. You're, no one in your family owns an airline. So what's compelled you to start your own airline? Um, I'm a Bangladeshi. And, you know, I am as frustrated as everyone else with the fact that why is it that we always have to use our flagship operator to fly to places like Bang uh, Bangladesh for the Pakistanis is the same love-hate relationship with their flag carrier yeah, PIA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I thought you know why isn't I mean there, are, there, there has been num numerous attempts to solve this problem but I don't know why they you know are not here uh, today operating you know flights to those destinations but I thought you know what 
I'm young, I'm still young, and, and I think with an honest approach and everything, you know, we, I can give it a shot and see, see how far I go. Initially, it wasn't so serious. I mean, I had to make myself believe that, you know, I can actually take this project on. Yeah. So I had to kind of reason with myself for, for, for a few months. And then, you know, we, I took that leap of faith and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do one thing a day, one thing a day that will take me closer towards my goal. Uh, ultimate goal. And I did that. I kept on doing one thing a day, one email a day, one call a day, one thing, <laughs> one this a day. And then uh, so very soon I, I found myself, you know, in a very serious kind of um, situation where I'm discussing various things with various people, various suppliers, various airports, various aircraft lessors, you know, investors. And that's, um, that's, that's how it all kind of started. And I thought, yes, I understand and I, I accept I haven't done, you know, aviation business before. But I think, as you've um, summarized before, with business, you know, there are certain ingredients that you need when it comes to business. And, you know, it could be um, your product, it could be your customer service, it could be the fact that you do things in a different way. And I thought, you know, um, we can actually do things quite differently in, in aviation as well, you know, bring fresh ideas to the table. And, and you know, that's, that's, what we, that's what we've kind of believed in and, and, and we've got a team around us. And that's where, that's, that's what kind of empowers me to kind of move forward because obviously alone, I can't do it. But with the, when you have the team around you who have hundreds, well, combined hundred plus years of experience, you know, who are always feeding information to you. So although you haven't done it before, as long as you can make good decisions and good judgments based on the fact that, and the information that you receive, then I think anyone can do it. It sounds a bit like what you're telling me there is about uh, similar, reminds me of Henry Ford where he said, I don't know anything about cars, mm -hmm. but on my phone I have access to experts that know everything there exactly. is to know about anything. Exactly, 100%. So it sounds like you've built yourself a really good team with the knowledge in the right places and all your job is to do is to make sure that you manage that process and you make the right calls, whether that's intuitive or whether that's from a logical process. Yep. It's just similarly to what you've done in the past, build on what you've done basically. Yeah, I mean, just having a 360 overview, you know, of the whole project, because yeah. obviously the team are responsible for certain tasks. And what you're doing is you're sitting at the top and looking at everything like a satellite. <laughs> and you have to make a decision based yeah. on all the information. Okay. So was it one frustrating trip that made you question and say, I want to challenge the status quo on uh, flights to, um, you know, Bangladesh and Pakistan or... Was there more to it than that? Uh, there has been. It's like every time I flew on our flagship carrier, you know, maybe other people would have different experience. But what I felt was like, I was like, I owed something to them for being on that flight. Although I'm the passenger, and, you know, I, I am the one who should be treated, you know, the way I should be treated as a passenger. Um, I remember, you know, staying in Dhaka like for so long, you know, for hours and hours and mosquito biting you to get yeah. to your destination. And, you know, you go to Silet and then you go through Dhaka on the way back. And it's like, yes, I get the fact that the, there's fueling issues at Silet, you know, runway issues, but, you know, it could be done in a, in a proper way. And, you know, I think it's those frustrations and I'll be honest with you, it's those three failures, you know, in, in the community that kind of motivated me even more to really take, take this on and, and again, prove, prove, prove to the community that actually, you know, it can be done. Aviation business is not to be blamed. Aviation business actually makes money. EasyJ is making money. Ryanair is making money. The guys who are very disciplined, they make money. But, you know, it's the... It's, it's, it's what's behind the business, you know. If the motivation is to generate profit, then, then there is money to be made. So if I've understood you correctly, what you're saying is, you went on a flight and you experienced much below your standards of level of satisfaction you would expect. You felt like they was doing you a favor by letting you pay a thousand pounds to fly on their yeah, plane. Yeah. You weren't happy with the service and you thought, hang on, there is a better way to this. There must be a better solution, and I'm the man to offer that. Yep. Okay, absolutely. I mean, I, I completely get what you're saying. My first time on a plane, in fact, it was worth doing being in Bangladesh. And um, on the way to Bangladesh, it caught fire over Austria. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was my first experience on a plane. So, yes, um, anyone 
and I speak to a lot of people who aren't happy with some of the providers that provide flights from here to countries like Bangladesh and Pakistan. But there's not really much alternative choice for them unless they get connecting flights. And when you're traveling with small kids or elderly people or people that health condition isn't always there, you know, the option for a straight, uh, whatever you call it, a direct flight, direct sorry, flight, non -stop. A direct flight is, is the only provider. So that's, that's the reason why people yeah, take it. So exactly. I think it would be healthy to see some more competition in the market. Of course. And we want to, you know, some people, some people are under the uh, misunderstanding the fact that nobody can fly into Silet. That's not true. That is not true because a British operator with a British license can fly into Silet 14 times a week. Just the way Biman can come to London non-stop, direct, 14 times a week. It's a bilateral agreement. It's a two-way agreement between the two countries. So there is no issues on that, on that front. And, you know, inshallah, when the time is right, I'd anticipate three to four years. Because obviously what we're doing right now is really just proving ourselves and our business model and the fact that we can actually sustain a safe, safe operation. And then the next stage would be to raise more capital, more fund, and get a really a Champions League team on board. Currently, we have a very strong team, but you know I want the likes of you know from aviation world the likes of Mo Salah to come and play with us. And I have got some people on you know who I am discussing with, who I am negotiating with. And again, I've been chasing them for four years, you know, to to come and join me. Of course, at this stage they can't join me because they have got too much to lose. Obviously, I'm a still a, we're still a startup. Yes. But once we have proved ourselves that we can actually do it, then they will, uh, you know, put the name to uh, attach the name They'll to, to our company. They'll have to jump onto the bandwagon. Yes. So, yes. Like so but. He is someone, it's one particular person, and inshallah people will see in the right time. He is, he is a Champions League player. Okay. So, so you've got your eye on the secret weapon. Of basically. course. You know, I've been chasing him for about being able to four years. To press the button. Yes. <laughs> okay, excellent. So um, you also had some experience um, working with aircrafts and uh, aviation um, yourself when you were a few years uh, younger. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about uh, that. Well, I... Um, I wouldn't be embarrassed because there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Every job is a job. Um, I started off as an aircraft cleaner. Um, I, I cleaned um, aircraft toilets. I cleaned aircraft seats. I polished planes, the private jets. I done the whole bug drop, you know, the water servicing, you know, every job that needed doing when it came to servicing a plane. And I've done that. And, you know, that really, really kind of taught me so much about the whole operation and it kind of you know, made me more passionate about, about the whole aviation operation because it's, it all works like a clockwork. And I want to be able to kind of, you know, do that myself one day, inshallah. Okay, sure. And we're running out of time now. So the last thing I'm going to ask you is if there was three pieces of advice that you could give on how to be successful or how to become a better business leader, what would your advice be? Um, if, I rem if I remember correctly, um, towards the end of the Channel 4 documentary, by the way, they can still watch it on, uh, on Channel 4 Catch Up. Um, the show is still there, it will disappear any minute. Um, I think first of all is, you know, being determined, as you've um, already pointed out, you know, you can't just give up. And secondly was, you know, you must, you must, you know, just keep pushing forward. Persistence was, is, is key, you need to persevere. And uh, thirdly is focus. Just keep going because you don't know what's gonna what's on your way. You will only know, you know, once you've progressed to that destination if it's a good thing waiting for you or a bad thing. Normally, usually, when you work so hard, when you work your butt off, you know, it's usually a good thing that's waiting along the way. So thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for those tips. We wish you all the best with your business going forward. And I have no doubts we'll bring you back in here to find out more about how your journey continues. Inshallah, no problem. So that's about all we've got time for on today's episode of Mind Your Own Business. So in the first half of the show, um, just to recap, we learned a little bit about Qadi Shafiq Rahman and about his Sunnah Musk business and how that went from a £600 uh, turnover business to a £1.2 million turnover business. And in the second half of the show, we learned more about his ambitions with Fana Surveys. And as we've heard, they're going around the red tape right now. But hopefully towards the end of the year, you should be able to book a private chartered flight and fly your friends and family to Europe or Paris. So keep an eye out for that. And the most important thing that we've learned today is 
the top tips that uh, Kazi Shafiq Rahman has given for you as a business leader on what you can do to become more successful, become more happy and become more free. And the first thing is to be focused. Make sure you're focused on your end goal. We heard him say he had a goal of setting up an airline. He didn't know how he was going to do it. He didn't know if he's going to happen, but he said to himself, I'm going to do one thing a day. So the focus was there to do one thing a day, but the more important thing was he was persevering. Every day he did something towards his goal and that helped him to get closer to his ultimate goal and get him to the stage where he is today, appearing on national TV and with his cinema business, appearing in the biggest shopping center in the world. And finally, the most important thing that we've discovered from Ethereum throughout all of the guests we've had on all of our shows is to be determined. In order to achieve the goals and in order to achieve the level of success that you are destined to achieve, you need to be determined and you can't let anything get in your way. And every time someone tells you you can't do it, use that as motivation to say, you know what, I'm going to prove to you that I am. And on that note, it's good night from me. I've been your host, Jamal Ahmed. And special thanks to our guest, Kadi Shafiq Rahman.